Hello guys, welcome and welcome to Media International Academy, one of the leading academy in training nurses in the nursing competitive exam as well as IELTS and CLEX and OED training. So again, today we are going to start with the magic pill session and those who are not subscribe the channel, please subscribe the channel before watching the video and if you like the video, please like it, share it to others also so that it will be useful for others also. Okay, so let's begin the session. So we are doing the MCQ series every day morning. It will it is coming and knocking your door. Please, uh, what you supposed to do is just listen to the video, watch the video, understand the concept, update your knowledge. Okay. So don't neglect this kind of videos. These things are brainstorming questions already asked in the previous year exams. That is in Jigma and AIMS not set. So those questions with adequate explanation we are explaining to you. So watch the video. It will be so much useful for you for the upcoming examination. So today we are going to start with the nutrition topic so which of the following polysaccharide is not digested by the human enzymes and is a major constituent of dietary fiber so this is the question so as usual first we have to check for the key points in the question so they are asking about the polysaccharide not digested by the human enzymes okay so this is the first key point okay and it plays a major constituent in the dietary fibers it is very important dietary fibers and it is not at all digested by the human enzymes so what are all the human enzymes Let's take uh, amylase, lipase, trypsin, chymotrypsin, carboxypeptidase. These are all the digestive enzymes which is used for the digestion of carbohydrate, protein, fat, right? So these enzymes cannot digest this polysaccharide. They have what they have asked in the question. What kind of polysaccharide cannot be digested by the human enzymes and plays a vital role in our body? So this is the question. Let's see the options. Fructose, starch, cellulose, dextrin. So four options they have given here. Among this, the right one is option C, that is cellulose. Option C, cellulose. So why I selected this option? What is cellulose? Let's see in detail. See, dietary fibers are non-digestible carbohydrate. The first vital point is dietary fibers are non-digestible carbohydrate, guys. Okay, see two types of carbohydrates are the digestible, which can be digested by the human enzymes like amylase, lipase. Okay, but here they are saying that dietary fibers that are not at all digested by the human enzymes. Okay, that is non digestible carbohydrates. Okay, fine. So that is the first important point dietary fibers are non digestible carbohydrates. Okay, so the second point is these include water insoluble fibers and water soluble fibers so two points are there two type of dietary fibers which are non digestible in carbohydrates like water insoluble fibers and water soluble fibers once again i will repeat dietary fibers two forms are there dietary fibers are nothing but non digestible carbohydrate two forms are there water soluble water insoluble what are the examples of water insoluble the best example is cellulose hemicellulose so cellulose option is mentioned here that's why we selected option C as the right one. Okay. The example of cellulose is vegetables and example of hemicellulose is cereals and grains. These are all what? Water insoluble dietary fibers. One more thing is that water soluble dietary fibers are pectin and gums mucilages. I will be explaining what is the meaning of uh, gums, pectin and uh, mucilages. Okay. Don't need to worry about that. So the best example of pectin is fruits, vegetables and legumes okay fine so on the whole as per the question they are asked that a polysaccharide which is not digested by the human enzyme is either cellulose hemicellulose pectin gums mucilages all these five points are correct among these five point only one is given in the options in the question options that is cellulose that's why we selected option c cellulose as a right one okay so these cellulose is cannot be digested by the human enzymes Okay, now we have to go, we have to see what is the meaning of gums and mucilages. It is there in the next slide. Let me explain. So, this is gums and mucilages. Very commonly, we have seen this type of gums and mucilages, guys. You can see the image is also mentioned, given very clearly. Gums means, if you see any trees, if you cut any trees, or if there is any damage in the branch or the stem of the, of the trees, yeah, gum-like substance will come out. Right. So that is called as what gums. It is a polysaccharide. It can readily dissolve in the water. Understand guys. So it is a water soluble dietary fibers. It is coming under what polysaccharide. Okay. Fine. And one more thing is there. 
you know about the aloe vera plant if you cut the aloe vera plant a gel like substance will be present you can see in this image right a gel like substance is present right so this is called as what glycoprotein it is also a polysaccharide it is also what polysaccharide but these two things are what water soluble polysaccharides water soluble polysaccharides okay so i am just giving the example of water insoluble dietary fibers and water soluble dietary fibers okay fine the next options are see for this question the right answer is what option c that is cellulose okay guys fine so why i selected cellulose because it is not digested by the human enzymes not only cellulose hemicellulose pectin gums mucilages <coughs> everything is correct but in the option what is given cellulose is given that's why we selected option c <coughs> the next one is fructose starch dextrin what is that for knowing these things you should know about monosaccharide disaccharide polysaccharides what is monosaccharide what is disaccharide and what is polysaccharide let me explain with the uh, tableau column because these things are very important in the nutrition okay that's why i'm explaining each and everything in detail so classification of carbohydrate if you take this one means three type of classification actually four types of classification is there okay how many types four types of classification is there monosaccharides disaccharides oligosaccharides and polysaccharides okay just go through it so monosaccharide means only one sugar molecule will be there that is called as what monosaccharide and the examples are given very clearly that is glucose fructose galactose all these things are coming under what monosaccharide in the exam you will be getting the questions like which among the following is coming under what oligosaccharide which among the following is coming under monosaccharide if disaccharide is mentioned means how many sugar molecule will be there if polysaccharide is mentioned means how many sugar molecule will be there so these kind of questions are coming means you have to answer it so for that only this slide this slide will be helping you very truthfully in the exams okay so monosaccharide means only one sugar molecule will be there i have seen there we already uh, discussed about the examples like glucose fructose and galactose and second one is disaccharide di means you already know that two two sugar molecule will be there it is the best examples are sucrose lactose maltose oligosaccharide that is 2 to 10 sugar molecules will be there that is raffinose and stachinose and polysaccharide means 10 or more sugar molecules will be there that is starch glycogen and cellulose see oligosaccharides very less uh, this kind of uh, words oligosaccharide see monosaccharide disaccharide polysaccharide frequently we would have been heard about these things but oligosaccharide very less we have heard about that but still it is very very important 2 to 10 sugar molecules are present examples are raffinose and stachyose okay so if you know all these things it will be very easy to answer the questions hope now everything is clear right this is how you have to study so whenever you are taking one question means you should know the rational of each and everything you have to study thoroughly okay only knowing the answer is not enough if you studying one question you should know about the key points in the question and you should know the rest of all the four options then only it is a complete learning of your question so this is how you have to study guys so next let's go to the second question in protein classification class a protein or this question also repeatedly asked in the examination class a protein or four options they have given here animal protein vegetable protein oil protein and milk protein so in this question it is a direct question class a protein they are asking and here the right answer is option a that is animal protein option a is the right one why i have selected option a see two class of proteins are there guys so class a and class b all the point whatever i have highlighted in the red color it is very very important vital points class a it is having high biological value means high biological value means what it is not a complicated term all essential amino acids are adequately present means that is called as what high biological value it is coming under what class a protein first class protein that's all understand guys how many essential amino acids are there first important point related to essential amino acid is we have to take from outside essential amino acid we have to take from outside non essential amino acid it will be produced in the body but essential amino acid we have to take from the outside that is the first vital point second vital point is how many essential amino acids are there nine essential amino acids are there 
non essential amino acid 11 non essential amino acids are there so these are all the other things okay so all essential amino acids is adequately present means that is called as what class a it is also called as biologically complete what it is called as class a protein is also called as what biologically complete protein important point guys so examples like protein found in animals food like eggs meat fish dairy product all the uh, animal foods egg meat fish dairy product everything is coming under what class a protein all essential amino acid will be present the second classification is second class protein low biological value it is also called as bi biologically incomplete biologically what incomplete the first one is biologically complete second one is biologically incomplete here the examples are protein found from the plant cereals beans nuts oil seeds these are all the proteins which is coming from the plant but it is not biologically complete because there is a lack of essential amino acids okay so according to the question class a protein means what animal proteins okay fine guys Second question is which of the third question is which of the following a nurse has to consider as an indicator of good nutrition? Good nutrition indicator. That's all. This is the key point. So let's see the options. Albumin level 2.5 gram per deciliter. See, 2.5 gram albumin level is very less. Malnutrition patient will be having albumin level 2.5 gram. Pre-albumin level 18 mg per dl. Yes. More than 16 mg per dl, it is uh, a good nutrition. Transferrin level 244 mg per dl. Transferrin is very, very useful in the iron metabolism for the transport of the iron. And it is not at all related to this question. Okay. And the next one is total lymphocyte 1900 micro per liter. This is also not at all related to this question. So which one is related to this question? The first and second options, right? So here the right answer is what option B that is pre-albumin level 18 mg per dl. It denotes what? It is an indicator of what? Good nutrition. The rationale behind this is Pre-albumin level, that is option B only I am discussing, okay. Pre-albumin level, it is also called as what? Transthyretin. Transthyretin is more sensitive and cost-effective indicator of good nutrition. The normal value is also mentioned here, that is the level less than 16 mg indicates inadequate nutrition. More than 16 mg indicates what? Good nutrition. That's why we selected option B, because in the option what they have mentioned, 18 mg per deciliter, that is more than 16 mg means it is in indicating what? Good nutrition. Okay, guys. And let's discuss about the albumin level also. The normal pre-albumin level I have mentioned here, 3.5 to 5.5 gram per deciliter. It is mentioned in grams. It is mentioned in what? Grams. Okay. In mg, more than 16 is a good nutrition. So albumin level less than 3.5 mg. Here what they have mentioned, albumin level 2.5 mg, right? Albumin level 3.5 mg per deciliter is associated with the malnutrition. That's why I not selected the first option because here what they have mentioned, albumin level 2.5 gram. This is less than 3.5 gram, right? It shows the patient is having malnutrition. It is not a good indicator of good nutrition. That's why I doesn't selected option A. So here the right answer is what? Option B, okay? The next question is, what is also known as lipids that is necessary for the normal transport and utilization of other lipids, especially in the liver? They are asking about one lipid which is used for the utilization of other lipids, especially in the liver. Okay, so this is the question. So, four options are given here. That is plasma, low, gens, cephalin, lecithin, cardiolipin. Among these, the right answer is option C, that is lecithin. C, lecithin. It is playing a vital role, guys, especially in the lungs. There are two types of lecithins are there. I'm going to discuss about these two types of lecithin. Please listen carefully. It is very, very important for your upcoming examinations. Okay. So lecithin is also called as what? Phosphatidylcholine is a surface active agent. Okay. Leave those surface active agent, all those things. The other name first you have to remember. That is phosphatidylcholine. First vital point is over. Second one is... The lecithin is used for what? Emulsification of the fat. That is breakdown of the fat. The breakdown of the fat is done in the brain, nervous tissues and sperms. Okay. So this is the function of the phosphatidylcholine. The main function is what? Emulsification of the fat which is present in the brain, nervous tissues. 
This is one type of lecithin. Another type of lecithin is there. It is very, very important, especially for the newborns. Dipalmitoyl lecithin is a lung surfactant. It is used for the prevention of the collapse of the alveoli. Okay, fine. It is maintaining the surfactant. It is a surfactant. Okay, if this dipalmitoyl lecithin is less means the fetus, otherwise the newborn will go for what? Hyaline membrane disease. It is also called as surfactant deficiency disorder. Hyaline membrane disease also called as surfactant deficiency disorder. It is very commonly seen in the premature newborns. Clear guys? Yes, both are very, very important. Both the type of lecithins are very, very important. The next question is, all of the following are the good source of omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acid. P-U-F-A means polyunsaturated fatty acid. And it is an except question. Except question. Please remember that. Good source of omega-3 they are asking. But it is an except question. Mustard oil, groundnut oil, corn oil and fish oil. Four options are given here. The right answer is option A. Mustard oil is not a good source of omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acid. All other options like groundnut, corn oil, fish oil are a good source of omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids. There guys, the rationale I have given here very clearly. Omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids are nothing but the oil which is generated from the salt water fish, that is sea fish. Flax seeds, groundnut oil, corn oil, walnut oil and some other vegetable oil. All these things are coming under what? Omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acid oils. People consuming the diet rich in omega-3 fatty acid have reduced, that is reduced incidence of cardiovascular disease. It is a good source, good oil. Okay, guys. Fine. So, so far we discussed about what? Nutrition. All the vital points we have covered here. Any doubts anywhere, please drop your message in the comment section. So, those who are watching the channel without subscribing, please subscribe the channel. And if you think that it is very, very important, very useful for us, useful for you guys, so please share to others also. Okay, so thank you very much and all the best for your upcoming examination. Keep watching Magic Pill Sessions. Okay.